After the $1,599 NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090, a graphics card primarily designed for business use, was released last month, the new generation of GPUs has now reached the slightly less well-off PC gaming community with the $1,199 NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 16GB Founders Edition. This indicates that the price point for the DLSS 3-frame generating technology and the lofty performance claims of the RTX 40 series have decreased somewhat. Although this new GPU generation is still in its infancy, the RTX 4080 has so far put on a good performance. Make sure to stay tuned until the end. Before we discuss the RTX 4080 name controversy and performance figures, we need to briefly discuss how NVIDIA positions its GPUs and why this generation is a little different from years before. NVIDIA GPUs with the 80 designation have been considered the top mainstream cards for more than a decade, and their prices have typically ranged from $500 to $700. Looking more closely at current patterns, the RTX 2080 and 3080 launched at $699, while the GTX 1080 cost $599 at launch. Considering this, you might be asking why the RTX 4080 starts at over twice that range. The aforementioned fiasco has a solution. NVIDIA originally intended to release two RTX 480 models, the 16GB model which costs $1,199 and is the one we're reviewing here, and the 12GB model which costs $899. NVIDIA has released VRAM variant cards before, but normally the quantity of VRAM was the only change. In this case, the two cards also had differing core counts and clock speeds, which in the past would have required a downgrade to a lower tier, in this case, the RTX 4070. People had legitimate complaints about the confusion this was already beginning to cause, and to NVIDIA's credit, it reacted by choosing to unlaunch the RTX 4080 12 GB. It is now being speculated that those cards will be reannounced with the RTX 4070 Ti name, though as of yet there is nothing official. That's all well and good, but it still leaves us with a mainstream card that costs enthusiast tier prices instead of the mid-generation step-up pricing that was traditionally reserved for cards with the Ti name. As a result, rather than comparing the RTX 4080 to the RTX 3080, which also debuted at $1,199 in June 2021, normal generational comparisons are a little skewed this time around. GeForce RTX 4080 NVIDIA Design and Features If you are familiar with the RTX 4090, you will recall that it's an incredibly large and powerful card. While the RTX 4080 isn't exactly small, it has the same triple slot designation and is exactly the same size as the RTX 4090 at 11.9 inches long, 5.4 inches broad, and 2.4 inches thick. This card is large. The RTX 2080 and GTX 1080 were even smaller than the RTX 3080, which was 11.2 inches long, 4.4 inches wide, and 1.5 inches thick. The huge dual actual flow of cooling solution needed to regulate temperatures accounts for the majority of that weight. The cooler is largely the same as the one for the RTX 3090, but it has bigger fans and higher fins to produce, according to NVIDIA, 15% more airflow at the same noise level. During a prolonged period of testing, the RTX 4080 kept temperatures averaging 53 to 55 degrees Celsius with a peak of 57 degrees Celsius while remaining obliviously silent. The RTX 4080 features 9,728 CUDA cores down from 10,240, 304 4th gen tensor cores versus 323rd gen, and 76 3rd gen RT cores compared to the RTX 3080 Ti versus 82nd gen. In other words, it has somewhat fewer cores overall, but they're newer. However, the 4080 has a boost clock speed of 2,505 MHz compared to the RTX 3080 Ti's 1,665 MHz, as well as 16 GB of GTDR6X VRAM as opposed to 12GB on its 30 series predecessor, so the fall in count shouldn't be concerning. The 16 pin 12VH PWR power connector, which has lately made headlines owing to allegations of it melting and overheating, is used by both the RTX 4090 and the 4080. Although we haven't encountered any problems with it in any of our tests, we'll continue to keep an eye on the situation as this generation of graphics cards develops. In terms of power, the RTX 4080 does have a TDP of 320 watts, which is lower than the RTX 3080's Ti's TDP of 350W. NVIDIA advises utilizing a power supply with a minimum output of 750 watts. For those whose power sources don't have the new connector, a 3x8 pin adapter is also included in the box. 
The RTX 4080 includes 1x HDMI 2.1a and 3x DisplayPort 1.4a connectors. Although AMD's recently unveiled RX 7900 XD and XCX use the newer DisplayPort 2.1, which provides more than triple the bandwidth, it allows for 4K resolution at up to 480Hz or 8K at up to 165Hz as opposed to 240Hz at 4K and 60Hz at 8K for DisplayPort 1.4. This is the typical layout for current generation graphics cards. Although it's kind of a moot argument because few games and monitors will be able to utilize that bandwidth, AMD theoretically has the advantage. GeForce RTX 480 NVIDIA Performance In 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra, the RTX 4080 outperforms the RT 3090 Ti and AMD's RX 3950 XT, the two top GPUs of the previous generation, by 17% and 28% respectively. It also improves by 35% over the RTX 3080 Ti, its generational predecessor with the same pricing. With a score of 16,255 compared to the RTX 4090's 21,872, it performs significantly worse than the latter, as you might expect given that the latter card costs $400 more. In Hudigain Heaven, the RTX 4080 beats the RTX 3090 Ti and RX 6950 XT by a little margin at 1080p and 1440p, but it lags behind both cards at 4K. However, it consistently outperforms the RTX 3080 Ti, holding a 13% advantage at 1080p, 14% at 1440p, and a slim 4% advantage at 4K. The ray tracing artificials are more striking. In each of our three tests, the RTX 4080 outperformed the RTX 3090 Ti on average by 28% and it completely destroyed the RX 6950 XT, which lacks NVIDIA's hardware's ray tracing capabilities. It performs even better when compared to the 3080 Ti, with an average improvement of 45% over that card. Following on to our gaming benchmarks, the RTX 4080 once again performs admirably at each of the three tested resolutions. At this point, the RTX 4080 and the more potent RTX 4090 are paying the meter in our benchmark tests, which are essentially CPU bound at 1080p. In tests that aren't CPU bound, the card significantly outperforms the previous generation in 1440p while matching the top score in those that are. But the real story is at 4K, because of how expensive this stuff is. You shouldn't spend this much on a GPU if you aren't playing at 4K or higher resolutions. By significantly expanding your test suite, you can notice that the RTX 4080 offers significant improvements over the RTX 3090 Ti and RTX 3080 Ti, with an average improvement of 27 and 45% respectively. Remember that the latter of those cards debuted at the same time, $1,199 price point as the former, which debuted earlier this year with a $2,000 MSRP. The frame rate of the RTX 4080 increased dramatically once more, thanks to DLSS, reaching 108 with frame generation and 73 without. Those are fantastic results for one of the most demanding PC games available right now. And keep in mind that this benchmark was performed at 4K with the highest settings and ray tracing enabled. The 30 series RTX GPUs, on the other hand, don't have access to frame generation at all, so both get less of a boost from DLSS. Naturally, since DLSS 3 is still a very young technology, there are now just a few supported games. A Plague Tale, Requiem, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered are just a few of the games that are receiving it as it's gradually extended to others. When it comes to high-resolution, high-frame rate gaming, DLSS 3 will be the feature that actually justifies upgrading to a 40-series card if support expands as anticipated and the performance boost remains impressive. The GeForce RTX 4080 puts on an impressive performance display that justifies its high price. It outperforms even the top members of the previous generation and provides increases of almost 50% on average over its RTX 3080 Ti price predecessor. However, as this new generation is still in its infancy, it'll be some time until the middle and low-end cards of the 40 series, as well as AMD's upcoming RDNA 3 cards, are released. Until then, we won't have a clear understanding of the RTX 4080's relative value. However, until then, the RTX 4080 is the greatest graphics card you can purchase, aside from its $1,599 older sibling, and it warrants spending $1,199 if you're planning to construct an enthusiast-level gaming PC that can handle intensive 4K games. What are your initial thoughts on NVIDIA's RTX 4080 GPU? Let's know in the comment section. 
And if you enjoyed watching this video, then please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such amazing videos like this one.